Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I've been a professional family systems therapist for almost 32 years. And as part of that, um, I have come across many, many people who struggle with a widespread, severe psychological wound called shame. That's another way of saying low self-esteem. People who bear excessive shame as a psychological wound often have difficulty with the priceless prize of something that can be called self-love. <clears throat> the purpose of this video is to provide some perspectives, some questions and thoughts that I hope you'll find useful in thinking about do you love yourself? Do you really love yourself? And what does that mean? And how can you tell? How can you tell? Because another companion wound is reality distortion. Many people think they love themselves, but in fact, they don't. Could that be you? Let's find out. To begin, <clears throat> Think now of several friends, current or past, that you genuinely love. And I mean friends. I don't mean a mate, a parent, a sibling, a child. I don't mean God, even. You might do that, though, on your own. But think of a friend, another person you're not sexually involved with, you don't need, they're not, they don't carry the same genes as you. Think of another person that you really love that you did or you do love. Keep them in mind as we go. Okay? Question. Did you include yourself as you reviewed your, quote, friends, unquote? Do you love yourself, do you think? Let's find out. It's sad to note that young children who whose parents don't know how to love who are psychologically wounded and can't bond or can't genuinely provide the unselfish sacrifices that raising a young child calls for. Young children who don't experience consistent, genuine love from one or more adults grow up not knowing what love feels like. They may grow up uh, not really knowing what love feels like experientially. They can form an intellectual idea of it, but in terms of saying, yeah, I feel loved by you, they may not know what that feels like because our society puts a high premium on love. Songs, poems, headlines, dramas, TVs, everything. People who have not experienced love pretend that they know how to themselves or they pretend to others. That may or may not include you. Did you experience genuine love when you were a young child? How do you know it was love? Uh, there are several types of love, as you know. Um, <clears throat> there's platonic love between friends. There's family love between relatives who carry the same genes. There's sexual uh, or erotic love, where a component of the love is sexual desire. There can be love of a pet, love of an idea, love of a place, love of a country, love of an ideal, love of God, many types of love. For the best comparative purposes here in this video, we're really focusing on love of a friend or platonic love, okay? I want to propose that self-love is different than egotism. Many of us were taught by stern parents, don't get a swelled head, don't think you're so special. Statements like that to a young naive child often inhibit growing the ability to say, I love myself and I love you. <clears throat> so, accidentally, many of us who suffered traumatic childhoods were taught indirectly or directly, don't you dare love yourself. 
because that means you're swell-headed, you're egotistical, you're self-centered, and you're bad. Did that ever happen to you? Do you know some people to whom it happened? They don't know how to love themselves. The good news is there is a way to learn how if that in fact happened to you or someone you care about. <clears throat> a useful question to ponder, which is too big for me right now, is how does self-love relate to the concept of pride? How would you define pride? Are you proud of yourself? Is that okay? Is that morally acceptable? Or do you feel guilty about those times you feel proud? Um, that deserves a separate video, so I'm not going to go further with that, other than to simply invite you to think about how does self-love relate to pride? Now, I want to offer you an exercise, not a bunch of talk, but an exercise that, in my experience anyway, <clears throat> can clarify and help you answer the question truthfully. Do I love myself? Do I like myself? Do I respect myself? Those are all related, similar questions. Each has a different flavor. Here's an exercise I invite you to try the next time you're undistracted. Once again, think of several, one or more friends, I mean friends, whom you love the best. Who's your best friend? Do you have one or do you have several? Do you love them? Is that the feeling that you would use to describe how you feel about them? Think of them. Recall as vividly as you can how it feels or felt to be with that beloved person or each one of those persons. Uh, how did it feel? Remember how you felt? Good, energized, happy, excited, pleased, in harmony, strong, confident. Remember how good that felt or feels? Uh, keep that feeling in mind. Imagine looking at that friend, a beloved friend. Look them in the eye and say, I love you. I love you. Imagine saying that. If you have trouble doing that, you may have the severe psychological wound of excessive shame. Those of us who have that wound have to learn how to say and mean, I love you, but you can't. Now, find the nearest mirror that's big enough so you can see your whole face. Glance calmly at the person in the mirror. Get good, comfortable eye contact. And say out loud to that person, I love you. I really do love you. Notice the feelings that you have when you do that. Notice the thoughts. Oh, I shouldn't say this. Or, I really do. Notice the feelings. Are they genuine, joyous, rich, love feelings? Or are they guilt or doubt or confusion or numbness? If you feel that's genuine, I really do love you, like I love my good friend. And if you don't have confusing or conflicting emotions when you say the words, I love you, I really love you. By the way, you can follow this up by saying, the reason I love you is, this is a little intellectual, but you can list the qualities, the traits, the values that cause you to say and feel, I love you, I love this person. <clears throat> if you can't say that, or if you look away and break eye contact, why is that? I want to suggest that the entire focus of my lesson one here on YouTube and in the related selfhelp.org um, self-improvement website that I've created, the whole purpose of lesson one is to learn how to love yourself, free your true self, 
harmonize all your self-selves and learn to genuinely love yourself without guilt, without shame, without anxiety. Wouldn't that feel fine? For more on this, um, here are two resources. One is a pair of videos that I've created on improving your own self-respect that overlaps this video, but it's a little different. So here's a link. Take a look at that now or later. There are two of them, part one, part two. And here's a link to a website article on what this video has focused on. Um, how to cultivate self-love. Notice how you feel right now. Notice where your thoughts are going. I hope you find this thought provoking and I hope you follow up on this. And if you genuinely do love yourself, I congratulate you. It's a priceless gift. If you have kids, I hope you're teaching them how to do the same. Thanks for watching.